Welcome to Retro Arcade Reviews. My name is John, and in this episode, we will be reviewing the arcade classic, Contra. Not the hit NES Contra, but the arcade coin-op. And get ready, because this is going to be a long one. Contra is a run-and-gun shooter created by Konami in 1987. Now, I think everyone who is into retro games are more than familiar with the NES version. And if you're not, I'll briefly fill you in. You see, back in the 80s, the NES Contra was an immensely popular hit. It had a cool, catchy soundtrack, the game was fun and exciting, and it was a two-player co-op. It was just a great game altogether, and if you enter the Konami code, which if you don't know, it's up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start, at the title screen, then you are awarded 30 men. It might as well have been unlimited lives, because this was more than enough for you to run through the game. Now this was significant because at a time when games did not have a difficulty setting, all games by default were pretty difficult, hence the term. Nintendo hard, so it's pretty challenging to actually beat a game. If you don't believe me, do this little challenge. Try to beat the original Super Mario Brothers without warping or doing that Koopa Skip trick, and you'll see what I mean. Games were hard. The Konami Code offered players to sort of fully experience the game, and it was used a lot. So much so that the Konami Code also became known as the Contra Code even though Contra wasn't the first game to use it, Gradius was. So Contra was actually like one of those games that yeah, I didn't know it was originally an arcade game. I just never really ran into it even though some sources state that it was immensely popular. It was just one of those games I accidentally ran into on MAME. So I decided to give it a go and no, the Konami Code doesn't work on this version. Trust me, I tried. Now, there's some key differences between the arcade coin-op and the NES version, other than the obvious better graphics. The first thing you'll notice is that the boards in the arcade version are a lot shorter. The second thing is that you're gonna play the game and think, man, this game is easy. I was rushing through the game, enjoying it. I died a couple of times and then bam, out of nowhere, I had to start from the beginning again. That's right, similar to Konami's Haunted Castle, the game only lets you continue up to three times before you have to start from the beginning again. However, unlike Haunted Castle, the game is really not that difficult. It can get annoying, but it's not impossible. Another thing that might strike you that's a bit odd is the aspect ratio. The game has an upright screen, which is odd when you play the first board because upright screens are usually reserved for scrolling vertical shooters and or vertical platformers. But Contra is not only a side-scrolling shooter, it's also a vertical scrolling platformer with pseudo 3D levels. So the upright screen was designed to somewhat accommodate the action when it changes orientation as well as create larger appearing bosses. So the game's not that bad, but I have to say that the NES port is still an overall better game. In this game, you play as Bill and Lance, a couple of tough guy commandos tasked to infiltrate the base of Red Falcon, an evil alien organization with plans of world domination. You have to combat the Red Falcon guerrillas through seven stages of various terrains and underground bases before your final trek into the alien's lair. You have a gun at your disposal with several upgrades which can be obtained by successfully shooting flying item capsules or the pillboxes. Your upgrades include a machine gun, laser, spread gun, fireball, rapid fire, and a barrier. Now there's several facts when it comes down to this game. First and foremost, let's address the name, Contra. Originally the term Contra referred to a member of the Nicaraguan Contra Revolutionary Force that sought to overthrow the left-wing Sandinista government in the late 70s to the early 90s. And that's an extremely brief summary. I mean, there's so many issues, scandals, conspiracies, and controversies surrounding this topic that if I talked about it in its entirety, this review would have been like 30 minutes or so. So I'll provide links in the description if you want to know more about this topic. So there was this back and forth whether the name was actually taken from the group, which is not a good thing because the Contras were involved in numerous human rights abuses, but it wouldn't be unlikely because it was pretty much on the news all the time. Also, the song during the credit roll is actually named Sandinista, leading me to further believe that the name's origin was from the counter-revolutionary group. The thing is that the measures taken to ensure the continuous funding of the Contras by the U.S. government and former U.S. President Ronald Reagan were pretty shady, so any association that has anything to do with this conflict would be in bad taste. This is probably why they changed the name of the song in later releases of the soundtrack and renamed the game to Geyser in Europe. Second, it's no secret that when Japanese game companies want to broaden sales by appealing to an American audience, that they will make no qualms about using American pop culture references. And Contra is no exception. Contra is a delicate blend of the three top grossing action movies of the mid-80s, Rambo First Blood Part 2, Commando, and Aliens. 
the two main characters in the game were most likely modeled after the Sylvester Stallone from Rambo 2 and the Arnold Schwarzenegger from Commando not Predator as often believed. The arcade Contra was released in February 1987 and Predator was released four months later in June. Why there's a mix up is because Bob Wakelin, the artist responsible for the character rendition on the British home computer versions and the NES box art, modeled Bill after the Schwarzenegger from the Predator movie that was released a year later. Wakelin quotes, a Predator slash Aliens ripoff is what the game appeared to be. So I supplied Predator slash Aliens style pick with ripped Arnie Predator poses. However, the background art was ripped from the original arcade flyer and was not rendered by Wakelin. Which leads me to my next point, Aliens. If you've played Contra, it's pretty obvious that the aliens in the game were inspired by the movie Aliens, but if you required more solid evidence, the names Lance and Bill are referenced from the actors Lance Henriksen and Bill Paxton. Third, the characters from the NES title screen which is similar to the arcades resembles more the arcade characters rather than the NES characters where the only detail separating the two characters is the color of their pants. Contra was ported over to the Amstrad CPC, Commodore 64, ZX Spectrum, and of course the NES. The arcade version was also released on Xbox 360 Live Arcade, Konami Classics Volume 2, Konami Classics Series, Arcade Hits, and the PS4 Arcade Archives. Now I know I said at the beginning of this video that this was only going to be focused on the arcade version of Contra, but it's kind of hard not to talk about the NES version because the NES version was such an integral part of the franchise's success. However, sensibilities change and evolve over time, which is why certain successful game franchises, in my opinion, have to constantly reinvent themselves to stay relevant. Contra unfortunately never really undergone a true creative reimagining of the series to attract maturing gamers while at the same time staying relevant enough to appeal to a younger audience. It just kind of got stuck at being strictly a run and gun shooter. I mean don't get me wrong, there are exceptions when reinventing a game can go horribly wrong and sticking to the formula is usually preferred. I think in the case of Contra though, it probably would have reignited the franchise if it had undergone a complete overhaul. This doesn't undermine Contra as a classic and the influence it had on a genre. It was pretty unique in employing a variety of different playing perspectives, its use of scale and cooperative play. With that being said, grab your gun and grenades, put on that headband, play this game, and let me know what you think.